Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're going to build up that Jean Haraga Le Monster power supply. It's meant for Class A amplifiers. Let's go ahead and build it up. I'm going to bring the camera over. If you didn't see part one of this where I show the schematic and kind of talk about it, go jump in and see that video. This is part two. Tomorrow will be part three. Okay? Alright, let's get over here and take a look at this thing. And this is the kit. That's what the board looks like. That's kind of an interesting little dragon down here. Uh, power supply, the monster. So our eight diodes go here. The drain resistors go here. Then you can see our four caps and, and the spot where our big resistors go between the two sets of caps. And then we have our fuses and our output filters. And then here's our ground, our minus V and our plus V. So that's what that looks like. Okay, let's open up the uh, parts here. Alright, so we got our fuse holders here. Here's our large caps. See, these are the big caps that sit right here, stand up on the board. So that's where those guys go. And then our big diodes. And here's the Wema capacitors, and then our drain resistors, and our LEDs for over here. And that looks like our 1K resistors, which I'm going to change to 10K. And we have these little spade guys for the connectors. So they just will go into the end of the board down here, and on this end as well. That looks like uh, pretty much it, the parts. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install these guys, solder them up, and I think what I'll do is I'll start off with our capacitor that we have here, this uh, Cornell Dubler, and that will fit in the board, and as far as diameter, it's smaller than even this smaller circle there just a little bit smaller than that so yeah still plenty of capacitance and voltage so there might be options uh, where you have the same capacitance or near the same capacitance uh, with the same voltage that'd be a squattier shorter but bigger around so uh, you know so there's options having these different you know having that space left for some big caps. By the way, uh, this cap here on this other module, this is the kind of cap that those would fit in that diameter right there. So that's what that would look like. All right, just a couple considerations. When you uh, put these resistors down here and bend them into place, you know, some people just grab them and you just bend them, right? But it's good not to put uh, pressure on the body of the part so they actually have these little forming things and because of the spacing of this it really looks like when I lay it down they're bending them pretty darn close to the body usually you want to give a little bit of space but so that looks like maybe this first notch and then you can hold the resistor in there and just push leads over and that way it doesn't put uh, it doesn't uh, damage the meniscus, the forming and coming out of the part. So then it's pre-bent like that and it drops right in. Yep, there we go. And these things come in different sizes for different size resistors. Another right. consideration uh, are, is just kind of understanding. You can look at the data sheet uh, but if you're not sure and you don't want to look up the day sheet, it's, it's nice to know what this metal is tied to. Since it is metal, if you were going to put it on a heat sink, you would have to use an insulator. And let's see, if we put this lead here, we got 0.4 drop. And then if we switch it, it's open. So this over here, this lead on here, where the positive lead is the anode, and that's the cathode. Now if I go to the back side, I get that same connection so and then right here it's a short so the cathode is tied to this metal tab 
Okay, just be aware of that. And another thing is LEDs. There's, there'll be a flat spot on one of the leads and it's just, it's hard for you to tell because this flat spot's not that great anyway, but it's right here on this lead. And it's also the shorter lead. But you know, like these leads aren't really that much different in length, but there is a flat spot here. So if you put the negative lead on that flat spot, so you can tell this is the anode over here. The positive is the non-flat spot and the longer lead. Now the nice thing about this board is the silk screen is actually showing the flat spot. Sometimes there'll be a plus, but it's a good thing they have a flat spot, so you don't even have to really know that. You can just line it up and drop it in that way. Tip. One more tip is I see the value on this side, and I know this fuse box is going to be a tall thing and it's going to sit up like this so once I place this in there I won't be able to see the value looking this way so if I place it here so I can look into this way if I want to double check make sure I put the right value in then that's just another tip and then also as far as this fuse you can put it this way or you can put it in this way which way is going to be easier to open so you want to consider that too if you're going to be mounted up next to something maybe you won't be able to get it all the way open and if you mount it this way it looks like the capacitor won't bother it but if I try to open up the other fuse I'll have the two fuse hit leads hitting each other so just things to think about when you uh, you know install these things that you have options and so yes, even my little quarter watt resistors, I have a little bending tool for that. Yeah, these are pretty universal, pretty nice. So I just happen to have this Eligu kit and it has all the common values. Well, a lot of the common values anyway. So there's my 10K resistors I just pulled out for my LED swapperoo. And yeah, I'll put a link in. Uh, down below for this kit but pretty nice little kit and then as I place the parts in there I just fill down there I kind of spread the leads out just a little bit so that I can flip the board over without them falling out on me <laughs> and then you know they'll stay stay in place until I get them soldered okay guys so I've got half the diode soldered halfway in let me explain what I did and I'm they're also standing up obviously because I thought if I do want to put a heat sink down the board and then bend them over it, I want to have the lead length to do that. And if I want to just stand them up and put a heat sink on, I want to be able to do that too. So I just thought I'd start standing them up. Well, it wasn't really easy to get them all standing up. So what I thought of is, you know, like these snap-in caps, the leads are kind of bent so that they stay in the board easier. So this is what I came up with. Alright guys, so what the idea is, I put the part in the board in the direction it's going to face, make sure I do that correctly, and then I push it through and then I just grab it, the width of the needle nose, and then one lead I bend up, and then the other lead I bend down. And then when I let go, it, it just kind of sits in the board. And then what I do is I just solder every other lead, and then once I've got those soldered, then I flip it around and I can adjust, you know, the angle of it, make sure they're all straight up and down. Then I'll solder, then I'll finish soldering them. All right, guys, and something extremely important is to get the right polarity on your capacitors. And luckily they put the plus sign, plus they put a solid line to match with that solid line for the negative and the plus here. So that makes it easy to drop those guys right in. All right, the capacitors I'm tacking in. They're in there very solidly, but I'm just tacking them in. I'm not really filling up the the uh, solder joint because I might want to replace these with the 10 millifarads, right? Okay, just to let you know, what I decide on the fuse holders is I put where I, I realize I have to get in there and grip on these guys and pull them up. So I put them both to the outside so they open up towards the middle. So that was the decision on that. And to solder them in, they snapped in the board pretty nicely. They kind of held themselves in place. 
but I just pushed on the bottom of them as I soldered to make sure that they're flush against the board. Okay, so I've got the parts in. I've only put two caps in for now. One on the plus rail, one on the minus rail. And that's what it looks like right now. Diode standing up. We're going to start off with that, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do with that. And just want to see how much ripple we get with just two caps. Now, also, these are the 6800 mics. And then, see, here's the fuses. What I did is I decided I wanted to grab them on the ends, pop them up, and put them in here. Right now, I put a 5 amp fuse on each side, just snapped in. I'll just close it up. I got to still clean up the rosin with some uh, with some cotton swabs. But now look what came in the mail. So here's the uh, CDE, the Cornell Doubler that I put on there. And look what came in the mail today. The Elna. <laughs> so it's the 10 millifarad. Uh, it says for audio. So that's the Elna. I'll put a link down below. Uh, now you can see the size difference. So yeah, this guy, um, this guy kind of fits in between the two rings, and this guy you can see fits inside the smaller ring, and they both have the snap-in, you know, type leads. So, yeah. So, it's a good thing I just tacked those in because I think I'll probably end up replacing them with these. Now, look how they came. They just came loose in a bag. And I got, I got several bags. As a matter of fact, I got four bags just so I could build, have them around for other kits. So, but they just came loose in bags like that. Not, not shipped the best probably. Now here, I, I want to show you something else just on the fuses. I had to order some fuses because I didn't have the 4 amps. And what's funny is I still didn't get a 4 amp fuse. Uh, I guess I just clicked on this too fast. I saw it was like 250 pieces, 1 amp on the way up and I didn't pay attention and uh, no 4 amps. And we want the 5 by 20 so I'm just putting five. Also, these are fast blow fuses, so that, that's okay. I'll put the fast blow five amp C, and we got a bunch of them. It's just crazy. Look at all those fuses, and these were inexpensive. I mean, relatively, I thought they're pretty, pretty cheap actually, uh, from China. So hey, saving some money there. But yeah, that's a lot of fuses. I'll put the link down below in the cost right here so you can see. Now I'll tell you what, something else I considered, these little terminals, you know the little screw type where you put your wires in, these, these will take 14, 22 gauge, and I considered taking some of these two, the double ones, and uh, and putting them in, in place of these spades, because they actually would fit, and then I could put two wires per each one if I wanted. Uh, I thought about doing that way so I could just screw them in, but I decided to go ahead and put the spades in. It turned out I did have, after looking around, I did find some of these guys. But that is an option. So I'll put the link for this too. These were inexpensive, this, this kit, 70 pieces. There's doubles and triples in it. I actually had a couple of spare resistors here. So what do you think of the kit? You like it? Uh, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Helps to, with the YouTube analytics. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And I want to thank my Patreons for all the support. And let you know that you can become a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And I want to thank everybody for watching the videos, supporting the channel, and your comments and all that stuff. So tomorrow, we're going to test it. Alright? So stay tuned for that video. Alright? We'll see you next time.